I've just got a couple plugins from lollipopshaders.com. Uh, I've got the lsintegrator.dll and the lsmaterial.dll and it also came with a number of support files. So I'm going to have to put these files into a folder structure uh, so RenderMan knows where they are and can load them when I load RenderMan for Maya. So I'm just going to bring up the folder structure I'm going to use. So I'm on Windows. So I'm starting at Users on my C drive. And I'm going to go down to my username, which is Richard. And then Documents, which is a standard Windows folder. Now I've created a RenderMan folder. And within that RenderMan folder, I have a number of files and more folder structures. So directly below RenderMan is an RMS scripts paths PRMAN19, which is a folder I made. And there's a bunch of files in there. And then below that, there is an RMAN tree folder with the actual plugin uh, files in it. So I'm just going to step through all of those files and explain what they do. All right, I'm going to browse upwards and go to my documents. Well, I'll just go through C. And I'll go users and Richard and I'm going to go to documents and here's the first folder I made render man I'm going to go in there now the first file I encounter is lollipop shaders Maya launch dot bat so I'm just going to have a look at what's in there take that down and we'll go to that that's this folder right here so what that uh, bat file is doing is it is setting a bunch of environment variables. There's some standard RenderMan environment variables. There's RMAN tree, RMS tree, and RAT tree, which RenderMan itself will set when it installs, but this bat is going to override that. And then there's a custom environment variable that I'm creating called RMS script paths, which is going to tell RenderMan where any addendums to its existing INI files are and any other support files. And then there's an rdir uh, folder, which is going to tell PRMAN where a lot of that extra stuff is. So the RMS scripts path tells RenderMan Studio. The rdir tells PRMAN. And also in here is a uh, custom launch for Maya. Now the reason to use a bat file is that uh, I can use multiple bat files uh, set up for different versions of Maya or different versions of RenderMan, so I'm able to have multiple uh, versions running on the same computer without having to constantly go in and change environment variables and types. I mean, I could uh, set those variables in my uh, window, Windows system panel in the advanced system settings in the environment variables. Um, the one that RenderMan created initially are in here, but I'm not using them. I'm overriding them with a bat file. And uh, so that's pretty much it for that file. And now I'm going to go back to this. Um, so we've looked at this. Now I'm going to go to that RMS script paths PRMAN19, which is just right here. I'm going to browse up. And right away, I've got two .ini files. Now in the RenderMan install, there are INI files. These are addendums to those files. So I'm just going to have a look at what's in them. And these help set up the environment for RenderMan Studio and for PRMan. So the RenderMan for Maya.ini that I have here is an addendum to the existing one in the Pixar folder. And it's going to be doing three things. Uh, we've got this line, which is finding the DECL RI options 19.rman file, which is going to uh, load the Lollipop Shaders custom integrator. It's got it in the existing list um, so that the RenderMan options dialog box will know to load that one in. And then the parameters for that Lollipop Shaders custom integrator are in this GUI.rman. And then we have a search path list for the uh, custom args 
which the um, lollipop shaders um, LS material uh, is going to need in any other custom plugins that we have in our folders. And that's it for the render man for Maya.ini. Now, over here we also have the render mn.ini, and I'm just going to go to that one. So this is a search path that PRMan is going to use to find all those plugins. So we've got the standard ones that come with Pixar, uh, the Pixar installation. But then over here, there are a whole bunch of new paths to look in for plugins. And essentially what they are, are just telling uh, RenderMan Studio and PRMan to look here for any new um, uh, plugins. So after the INIs, I'm going to go to the LIB folder, the lib folder, and I've got these two files that I'd mentioned before, the GUI.RMAN and the Decal RI Options 19.RMAN. So the Decal RI Options 19.RMAN is here, and you can see that the Lollipop LS integrator is in that list. So if we wanted to add another integrator, we'd keep populating this list. And then uh, we've got some of the options below for that custom integrator. And then I'm going to go to this GUI.RMAN. And again, we've got a bunch of Lollipop shader um, uh, information within that. So not files you'd regularly go into if you're just loading the plugins in. I'm just going to go back up. Uh, now, where the plugins actually are is are in this RMAN tree folder, and I'm going to go to there, LIB, and then RIS, and you're probably asking why all these folders are buried in here. Um, this is the same path uh, folder structure that Pixar uses in their installation folder, and it's it allows you to add in other plugins which may not necessarily be RIS. Like above here, you may have... Um, a Rays plugin folder if you're installing Rays plugins. So we're going to go to the RIS and we have that integrator. So there is the Lollipop Shaders integrator.dll. And we're going to go to the BXDF, which are the materials. And there's the LS material.dll. And there's the args file. And if I have done everything right, I should be able to bring up Maya and go to the sampling tab. And yep, there's the custom integrator there, the Lollipop shaders. Custom integrator under sampling under the render man controls. And if I go, if I bring up Hypershade and I go to RIS materials, there's the LS material right there is great so the plugins are all fine and that's it so that is the lollipop shaders custom install for the ls material and the ls integrator